It is the knobs on the knob thorn that make the knob thorn such a distinctive and easily recognized sight in the African bush. And indeed, it is the knobs that give it its name, the knob thorn. How's it, guys? I'm Gus, the African plant hunter. And this behind me is a slender but very knobbly example of Senegalia nigrescens, the knob thorn, known in these parts here as Mukaya. I'm in Bikita district in southeastern Zimbabwe where the language is Karanga. Uh, more commonly in Shona it's known as Munanga and in Ndele it's known as Unkaya. To me it's the knob thorn. This tree is utterly unmistakable because of these nobles that you can see going up it. I've chosen this example, it's not a particularly big one but the knobs are very clear and I figured it would be nice to show you them that go all the way up from the bottom to the top to protect it from browsing. Uh, each one of those knobs is tipped with a little nasty spine. When the tree grows up to maturity, it does tend to lose its knobs. It doesn't really need to defend itself at that point from browsers. So often it, it, you can mistake a very mature specimen for something else because you think there's no knobs on it, so it can't be a knob thorn. But then you look at the leaves and you realize there's nothing else it can be because in addition to having very distinctive knobs on its stem, the leaves on this tree are utterly unique in terms of the acacias in Africa. So most acacias have, of course, um, their compound leaves uh, and their pinnate, feather-like, often very kind of feathery looking. And these leaves are quite different. They're much bigger, uh, more like the size of my fingernail. And there are two of them joined together, a little bit like a sort of mapani leaf kind of butterfly uh, configuration. And totally unmistakable, no other tree that looks like this even when there are no leaves in winter, there comes a time when you cannot mistake this tree because during autumn and September, the flowers on this are absolutely beautiful and striking, long white spikes of them. Uh, and you look across the African bush and there's not a leaf in sight. All the trees are bereft of leaves and the landscape looks quite bleak and then suddenly you see this massive showy display of the flowers of the knob thorn and you cannot mistake it. So these nobles do have a lot of uh, traditional superstitions and beliefs around them, uh, particularly relating to sexual performance, uh, breast firming. There are also medicinal uses, some well-established ones. Here in Zimbabwe, one of the traditional uses of the knob thorn is to treat chitsinga, which is rheumatism uh, and joint pain, which is also borne out in many other countries in Southern Africa. The timber is uh, quite a solid timber and used to make uh, clubs and sometimes fence posts, uh, good strong timber. The bark has applications in tanning and was traditionally used for tanning. Uh, this is a very popular tree. The flowers, the pods, uh, the, the leaves are browsed by a lot of different uh, wildlife and because it's a nitrogen fixing species there tend to be a lot of other species growing underneath it. So a very kind of healthy micro ecosystem that attracts a lot of uh, activity from other animals. So it is a really, really, really useful tree. It grows quite nicely, by the way. Uh, so you can grow it in your garden as long as you don't have frost there. Uh, and it is extremely good for the soil, so I would recommend it. One of my favorite trees in the African bush because it is so distinctive and so notable when you see those knobs there and you think, hmm, that my friend is a knob thorn. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm off to catch some other notable trees. If you have enjoyed this, plenty more on my YouTube channel and on Facebook and on Instagram, just type in African Plant Hunter, hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time one of my videos comes out. As for me, I'm off to chase down some other trees. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.